Hey guys, we are pleased to say that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation charity. And now, a message from one of our supporters. Hi Sylvia and everyone at the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Just sending some love your way. Thank you for all of the work that you do and for giving those a voice who feel like they don't have one. To learn more about this wonderful charity, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Hey Jamie, do you like being cosy? I do. And do you like staying cosy? I like that even more. Then just head on over to www.staycosyclothing.com. Where you can find hoodies, tees, sweaters and much, much more. With a new fall line out now. And just enter The Chronicles as one word at checkout to receive 10% off your order. And make sure you follow them on the Instagram at Stay Cozy Clothing to keep up to date with all the new designs. Remember, guys, that's The Chronicles as one word at checkout to receive 10% off your order. All right, I am shattered, but I'm good. Why are you shattered? Um, busy DJing weekend. Oh, yeah, that's in my, that's in my notes. So. Very. Um, all the DJs dropped out yesterday and I did seven hours on my own. What? Oh, why? As they just, yeah, we op- we opened at seven and we shut at twelve on a Saturday, but yesterday they were like, "Oh, we're opening at five. So yeah, and then Saturday everyone dropped out Sunday, so it was just me. <laughs> Fuck! Like, yeah, good night though. It was alright. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday was better, but why well, was Saturday better? Because there are more people there. And I had half an hour breaks every half an hour. Because, well, because that's when I took over sort of thing. Yeah, so I was just sat with Ollie and Martin and Nick. And then I'd have to do half an hour. And then I'd come back and sit down. Nice. That is absolutely banging. Yeah. I was. I saw the photos a bit like, oh. <laughs> I think I saw at one point, I saw like 118 songs queued up or something. Oh, that, that was last night. That yeah. was the... Like, <laughs> That was the total of what I had played, like at that point in the night. Fuck. What did it end on? I I'm just gonna have a look now. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I, it was just long and it was just a mix of everything, and I was just tired. And uh yeah, it was all right. Is How this was recording? It? Yeah, the whole time. Oh yeah, see. <laughs> Did we record everything? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't I ne- just don't necessarily put it all out. I just like to record to make sure it's there. It's, it's real, yeah. You um, might catch, catch some gold as well. Like yeah, no, yeah. it's good. I, I'm like, uh, I, I'm used to like pressing record and telling everyone what to do, and now I'm on the <laughs> other side of it. Yeah, you are. Are you ready to be absolutely destroyed and bombarded with questions? I, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Excellent. How was your recording, by the way? It was great fun. Really great fun. We did a, we, um, we just interviewed a, a rockabilly band called The Strays. Um, from Gloucestershire, um, amazing. Who I, I'm not really into that sort of music so much. Yeah. Like I, I can listen to it. It's obviously a an offset of like the punk genre and the mm. rock and roll genre. So I can listen to it. And um, they were really fun guys. They were really really great. Amazing. I listened to the uh, John Wilden episode earlier and just just laughing the whole time. It's fantastic. Yeah, it was funny as shit. Really good. Really good. It's, the podcast seems to come on strong, but we'll get to that, obviously. We'll talk. Um, absolutely. Jamie. Yeah. I just do my little intro where I basically suck your dick verbally and then throw the questions at him. That's cool. Nice that you threw that in. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind well, of what it to do, really, you know. Ah. Right. Let's go. Ladies and gents, on today's show, we are talking to a man who is a poster boy for music fandom. By that, I don't mean a certain band or a genre, just music in general. He's used that passion to become a DJ, not only local clubs, pub levels, but also across the internet on Twitch and at music festivals, along with his podcast, The Gatefold Gateway. He's what I like to call an ambassador for the local Gloucestershire music scene, but more importantly, he's a very dear friend of ours. Welcome to Yusuf Chronicles, DJ Damo, aka Damo Bachelor. Hello. Hello. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank Finally. you. Finally. Thank you for the intro. You're welcome. I wouldn't I wouldn't go post a poster boy. I'm not sure what that means, but No, no, I, me. I just thought it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm not sure if I like you or not yet, but I'll take, I'll take it. I was more proud of ambassador for local <laughs> ambassador, music. Ambassador, you got that's a good good word. I was good liking word. that one. Absolutely nailed that one, Dayman. How has the last year been for you, sir? Um, honestly, awful. Um, but it's it is what it is. I guess everyone's um, kind of like yeah, maybe seventy percent. 50% of the the UK population is in the same boat and I guess it's kind of um how you've used that time to 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 know to get something out of it and to to do what you want um some people have obviously just sat at home some people have made use of the time really well I'm kind of a bit in between I think I could have done more but I'm sure as we'll come on to later I've also learned a lot of new things which I'm really proud of and um yeah like on a like we won't go into details but some stuff has been a struggle um um but some stuff's been really good so it's kind of 50 50 um i guess yeah it's all about how you use your time and i've i've used my time okay yeah that's fair enough man i mean you said that you know people obviously either didn't you said you didn't use it as well as you thought you'd like to have done but did you teach yourself anything new or like a language or did you learn a skill or anything <laughs> like to, well i didn't Definitely not a language. Um, <laughs> so I could barely speak English, but um, <laughs> I, yeah. When we obviously left the the country, got into an absolute shambles in March last year, and um, we come out of race week, and um, uh, yeah, like most of my income, some well, all of my income is working in a pub Monday to Friday, or well, it's a pub, so it's Tuesday to Sunday. Um, that's 90% of my income. And then I get a little bit extra for doing what I love doing. And that's playing music. And all of that was kind of taken away for a minute. And then furlough was announced. And Tom, you know a bit about furlough. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we furlough came in. But obviously, all of that music money, which I was, you know, just, I loved doing it and I wasn't necessarily doing it for the music, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra money on the side. Um, and that was taken away. So the income was hit really hard, but yeah. So I guess st- stopping DJing really kind of threw me and the first, yeah, like April, May, um, were really, really tough. Um, you know mentally and what was I going to do I've not sat in the house for more than a day like I get out and I go places and Mm. it was like what can I do what can I do and I just I guess like a lot of DJs and a lot of bands that are are doing the same that you just learn how you can put your skill out there and for people to enjoy but on a different platform and obviously that's where the internet comes in um so I'd seen some DJs using um, a program called Twitch, um, which is like, I think it's more known for like people doing video games and mm-hmm. streaming games and stuff. But it's also an outlet for for musicians and like people can just go on there and record themselves playing their music. And there were also other DJs just doing it on Facebook and putting a speaker up to their, you know, their phone up to a speaker. So I, and I was like, I'm not about that life. Um, I that must have sounded dreadful. It did sound dreadful. And and the reason I and the reason I was really struggling is because I've not really taught myself anything to do on a computer since I was like in school. Um, I've yeah. I've got basic knowledge of computers. I can run DJ software. I can run Spotify on a computer, and I can run Safari, which is all I need. Um, <laughs> so Twitch was kind of like, how am I? I need hardware and software. And yeah, with the help from a few wonderful people, it eventually got going. And yeah, so that was the first skill. So like, I'm sure we'll go into that. And that was one of the things. And then obviously, then we were back at work and I was happy back at work, Um, not DJing because of social distancing and restrictions, but I was still doing a bit of DJing on the weekend, which was good because it kept my hands in. Um, And then the inevitable second lockdown hit in November and I taught myself how to record a podcast um, because I like talking and Just like good. we've, we've all known each other for a, a long time, um, yeah. a, like very long time. Um, and 
I guess the same as you two guys, like in our, in our circle of friends, like it takes a certain sort of person with, you know, a little bit of charisma, um, you know, and to, to be able to do it. And I just felt like as a DJ who likes getting on the microphone at a headphone disco, um, or when I used to work in Sainsbury's and I used to bar everyone from using the tannoy, it had to be me. Um, <laughs> those are the days. Those are the days, you know, and I, and, and me and Jamie were, you know, we put ourselves forward for anything to do in front of a camera and work to just to not be doing the day job. It was like, Very can much you it. do this? And it was like so different. I was like, I was always, a, I was, Jamie was probably an inch behind me in second place going, I'll do it as well. And we'll take a video camera around the fucking car park of Sainsbury's and promote some fucking salmon in a silly accent <laughs> for, for Gross the Keys. He's not even wrong. I'm not even wrong. That's no. that's the actual truth. It's like how can and we make a turkey interest? ordering that's free? That will stick with me forever. And and me and Jamie were the go-to guys because we didn't a didn't give a shit, but b we have that skill set. Which I'm not an actor. I don't. I'm not on television. I'm not paid for that. But it, it, in what they wanted, we could do it. And yeah. podcasting is is the same. And you need you need a certain skill set um, to be able to hold a conversation and yeah. to keep it interesting. So that's kind of why I decided I was like, I could do more DJing, but I was actually, I really like talking to people and I've missed talking to people and the podcast thing, as you know, it, it keeps you chatting to people and it's the best, it can be the best thing and it can be a lifesaver, even if it's just for 40 minutes a week. Um, it, it's just, and so I was like, I, I, had to learn more software and get more hardware and um yeah and it's just kind of developed from there so spent a lot of money but learned some stuff yeah it's always it's come good though hasn't it so obviously because the podcast is flying and like you said we will get to it but um, yeah i mean i remember last year obviously i was furloughed for pretty much the whole of 2020 Mm -hmm. um and this was the only thing that saved me i loved this the only thing i lived for on a weekly basis was interviewing and doing the show with jamie and i absolutely loved it so, I mean, just out of curiosity, I don't know if I've already asked this question. How did you guys meet? Was it Sainsbury's? Me and Jamie did, yeah, yes. Sainsbury, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I had a group of friends um, at Sainsbury's and then a few of them left and then Jamie joined. And I can't even remember what year it was. I think it was like 2004, 05. I think it was about 2006 or seven. Okay. Um, oh. And yeah, it's like, you know, when... <laughs> It's, it's that whole, um, like, the, the Slayer meme is when when you see, when you're in your Slayer t-shirt and you see somebody in the Slayer t-shirt, <laughs> you just nod and you go, yeah. And and it was kind of similar, like, you don't, in Sainsbury's, like, we didn't know who, we all got along, like, everyone worked, it was great, great fun to be there, but I was like, you can only have a certain amount of, like, proper mates that you think oh they're good they're good mates and and be- when i met jamie i just thought he's actually he's a, such a top dude he loves obviously kick-ass music which is what our group was about anyway like my friends and i we used to do like um rock band nights oh, they, um, those um, even mine day. or our friend dan's house and i think i was i said to our friend dan i was like um got a friend coming around is that all right um he works at Sainsbury's with us and Simon kind of knew him anyway and um and yeah we just kind of integrated him into the team um and yeah a love of wrestling music um yeah and it kind of it just went from there it's kind of the same way as like most friendships develop and you know you get them into your friendship group and they become part of just a natural part of a circle of friends yes because you are actually the reason why I know so many people. You are yeah. the main hub. And I met everyone I know I met through you. In Jamie Chattanooga. Westwood included. Yes. Because I remember I remember how I met you. I was so drunk. This is like 2007, I think, at Propaganda. You had a Mr. Kennedy t-shirt on. And I also had the exact same the t-shirt. Fucking Kennedy t-shirt. <laughs> I met one of the best t-shirts ever. One of the greatest wrestlers ever. We love that guy. I was fucked. And I walked into props. I think I've been there two, three minutes. I spotted you with the same T-shirt on. I jumped on your back and just went <laughs> in your ear. And I remember Katie at the time was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. Um, and like I said, 
Um, wrestling was a big deal for us back then. Like, yeah, yeah. It Jamie really was, was a rest- Jamie was a wrestling fan. Um, we probably got chatting because we like music, but I think when you when you've got friends that are wrestling fans, then it's like that forbidden conversation yes. you have, isn't it? And um, all of my friends were into wrestling and old school WWF, WWE, and it was it was just it was so easy for for him to come into our group, and then likewise went yourself because. What do you do? Fucking March comes around. You stay up and watch WrestleMania. And, oh, um, right. and prior to that, it was like, we'll, we'll watch pay-per-views and we stayed up for pay-per-views. And I've got pictures on my phone of Jamie falling asleep watching pay-per-views. And <laughs> it's every fucking time. Every, every time. time. But every time. It's, it's just part of the fun, isn't it? And we had traditions of going back for every WrestleMania. It was just, it, we, it was a big deal. And, uh, um, yeah, that's basically the best. It's, it's how you meet your best friends, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of my favourite moments was in, is it the King's Head in Presbury when Smitchy did the... Unbelievable. Was one of the best... <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> With that yeah, waiter. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> so glad it comes up on my Facebook memories yeah. once a year. Um, <laughs> it's not something I want to watch every day, um, oh. but when I'm reminded of it, yeah, I'm instantly taken back to arguably one of the best events yeah and that and the the, the skittles incident is also one of the absolute highlight yeah there's i mean there's a lot um yeah there's a lot there's a lot <laughs> yeah there is a lot and and it's you know it's it's amazing to look back because obviously like you talk about the last year um it's been difficult to make memories that yeah. you're yeah. gonna look back on in a few years time and go oh do you remember April in 2020 and what happened we're not going to be able to do that so for for now looking back at the best memories um it's got to be a positive way of thinking right when April 2022 hits there's got to be a you've got to make opportunities to make some more of those great memories and have some of those good times yeah, and hopefully getting ready for trees and download and sonosphere and latitude and God knows whatever else is coming out. Well, yeah, because festivals is kind of a write off again this year because of our shitty government, um, which and, and I don't like to talk, talk about politics. I'm not a politician, um, but yeah, they fucked us. They fucked us over. But hey ho, um, next year, like we just go harder and. That's, that's how it works. As, as soon as social distance is over, everyone's going to be out there naked partying for weeks. Yeah, I'll be there. No one's going to no go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even next year, it's like, let's fucking nail something down for WrestleMania, you know? Let's just do an all-night, or all day or all night, go for yeah, a roast. I'm let's down. just kick it old school. And let's do it. Let's do it. Because, everyone back would be yes. brilliant. Because we've not been able to, and I think everyone, as much as it's nice to see people at the moment, um briefly whilst you can and you're allowed and the restrictions are slowly being lifted and it's really cool um there's still there's still something that's kind of missing and i know exactly what you mean yeah like i'm enjoying what i've got at the moment and i'm enjoying my time and i'm enjoying being back at work and seeing friends um but it's it's just it's not quite right yeah no but we'll get there. We will. I suppose we should ask you some questions, really, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, just before, um, Jamie, I just want to just publicly say, like, just thank you so much, just because anybody that's working in the... I know you've just, like, you've changed your career and you're working in the NHS now. I and am. I think any, anybody that's part of our industry just deserves a fucking gold medal and a pay rise and not a fucking clap. Would be not, but I can't take credit. I've, I haven't been there that long. But no, I know. I know but you you're in there and you're on the firing line. And but I yeah, just, I've, I think, of, of all the negative stuff we've talked about and all the politicians and all the other shit, I think the NHS is going is just comes out as like the greatest thing in the UK. Yeah, completely agree. Like I said, I've only I saw the back end of it, and what I've some of the things I've seen has been horrible. So the people that were there through the worst of it, I tip my fucking hat to them. I really yeah, man, do. absolutely. So anyway. Take us back, my friend. Can you obviously we, we said like in the intro this passion for music? Can you remember where this came from, or is it something that's developed over the years? Like, as you heard a record one day, and you're like, that shit, I fucking love this, or is it just you know, 
music. It's just been all it's, part of your life. Yeah, my dad, without doubt. Um, if you know my dad, you know what an absolute legend he is anyway. Oh, yes. Um, just every single time we got in the car and there was just something to listen to because he loved music. He was in a band back in the day in the sixties, seventies. He was in a band, um, a big band, like in um, Haverford West, um, wow. South Wales. He was in not like a band, but in like a, I can't remember the sort of band he was in, but it was like a, they just had loads of musicians, loads of instruments um, and they played big venues and uh, he just wow. played guitar. And um yeah, we always had guitars in the house when we were younger, like me and my brother. Um, and most days we would sit there and sing Beatles songs. And my, oh. dad, my dad would play guitar from probably when I was like six, seven, maybe, you know, at least until I was like 13, 14 and still going to school and trying to be cool. And then it was like, come back home, get the guitar out, dad. Come on. So, <laughs> I want to sing Let It Be. Um, <laughs> So the Beatles was huge. I'm not a massive Beatles fan now. I was, but then I realised they weren't probably, I don't know if I should say this, I, I don't think they were as good as people made out. But back when that was what I was listening to, they were they were the greatest and I loved them. And they were they were charismatic. And they, that, that influenced how I am, like watching John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Um, as just the most outgoing, fun band to be around at the time, and also the biggest band in the world, um, probably the biggest band ever. Um, but my dad also had other tastes in music, like um, Dire Straits, um, Ario Speedwagon. I got onto those bands, and yeah, I just had music drilled into me from day one. And my mum was a huge Out and John fan. She had Out and John records, old school Out and John, like great, good records, like follow the Yellow, the Yellow Brick Road album. Um, so music was always in my house. I had it on all the time. It's funny you talk about the Beatles because I was exactly the same when I was growing up with my dad as well. He'd play the Beatles record every day, I think at least. And uh, I was just love that she loves you, yeah. That's, I used to love that song all the time, and I want to hold your hand. Was always followed it. You and, can't, uh, you can't beat them. Like for pop, pop maze and music. I don't know what you want to, what genre you put them into. They're to me, they're just a pop band, and I do respect them. I, I, if they're not a band I go back to very often, but I do have massive respect for them. And they are obviously when we touched upon rock band earlier. Um, the Beatles had a, their own edition of Rock Band. Yeah, uh, they did. And it was like, can you sing harmonies like George Harrison and those guys? And like, no, you fucking can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one can. No one can, though. <laughs> they're, they're masters of their craft and say what you want about them. And they're just amazing. And that's that's what I grew up on. I grew up on the Beatles. Incredible. But um, with, as we were saying with your music taste, it it's so like what's the word i'm after here it's so eclectic that's the word i'm after great word great yeah word, isn't it you know i've i've known you to listen to fucking taylor swift then go put devil driver on and then i've heard you mention do a leap of lows lately and obviously you know, <laughs> all over the fucking shop like dmx just names i'm pulling out the top of my hat is that do you reckon that comes from your dad or is that over the years with different people you've spoken to and venues you played etc 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 where do you think that comes from? I think it just comes from, I just wanted to explore music and also growing up around like being in school, like in the mid nineties. Um, I think I grew up in the best time for music anyway. Um, and people will say the nineties was shit or what the eighties was shit or whatever, but I grew up in a time when grunge was still about. So we obviously, everyone liked Nirvana. Um, Smells Like Teen Spirit was covered by every school band. Um, <laughs> like every band. It, may, it made me not want to like Nirvana. Um, I also had friends that were into Green Day and um, 
the offspring was one of my favorite bands at the time um and going back to what my dad i said dad can i just have a tenor to go and buy smash by the offspring it had just come out and i played it in his work and i was just like everyone in his work and i'm there a skinny little kid and i'm like i'm putting smash on by the offspring and you're gonna like it um <laughs> but and then the, the, the new metal scene happened and then um yeah and then pop music just because it's so great and i think djing um propaganda all those years um was just rock music and then it wasn't until i got out of props and into spoons i started gaining this new respect for like um pop artists so the pop was kind of a bit later um and maybe 25 year old me um you know drinking would think would want to punch me in the face for like loving <laughs> taylor swift and and all those artists but as you get older and we speak about it on my podcast it's like is it a is it a guilty pleasure well it's not really because you like it and you i've just i've just embraced the whole pop culture and well, you don't feel guilty for liking it do you exactly and i we've changed our question from what's your guilty pleasure to instead of asking that question we ask what is a musician that people wouldn't associate you with um because guilty pleasures is i don't think it really it shouldn't exist no, it, it might 10 to 10 years 10 15 20 years ago when people were a bit different it might have done um but now it it shouldn't because I can wear a Dua Lipa t-shirt out and I've got a Dua Lipa t-shirt and I've seen her live and she is hands down one of the biggest artists in the world right now. And she just writes absolute bangers. And that's, that's the reason why I like her music because it is so good. Yeah, it's fair. I can't say I blame at all. So um, I suppose when you're a DJ as well, obviously you kind of need that differentiation in tastes of different musics because otherwise if you're asked to play like R&B, for example, and you're like, mm -hmm. well, it's shit, I don't really like it, you're not really going to pull it off, are you? Because obviously we're going to get into the DJ stuff now anyway, but I mean like um, you, work, you, you can't pigeonhole yourself into one genre because then you can only play one certain venue rather than spreading out and playing yeah. all these different other places because you you know you start banging these bangers out i remember i've been with you and you've played songs and gone, fuck i forgot all about this this is yeah. phenomenal like um tiny temper and stuff like yeah. that like, absolutely incredible incredible scenes but how did djing actually begin like what made you go i want to start smashing oh. up people to dance to wow it's it is probably the time when me and jamie were hanging out actually um quite a lot um we were going to propaganda a little bit um, and we were, you know, I think, yeah, you were quite, quite propaganda quite a lot, weren't you, Jay? Um, um, to start off with, yeah. Yeah. So we were going to props, a few of us. Um, I didn't, and I was like, this is, this is cool. Um, <laughs> and I'd been to like, there was like, there was a proper metal night in Cheltenham, like industrial metal. And it was great, but it was like, it's just metal. And I was like, there's only, there's only, I, it was actually in Poonanar and then it moved to another venue. And I was like, I do like metal music, but I, I can't listen to it all night. I really can't. I like, they wouldn't play Green Day and they wouldn't play Blink and they wouldn't play Nirvana. That it would just be like Ramstein followed by Nine Inch Nails, followed by Sepultura, followed by, you know, any heavy band. Yeah. So we started going to props and it was a student night and I was a little bit older than a student, but it was, it was fine, but it was a proper student night, but we started going and um, started chatting to the DJ a bit. Um, and he was like, oh, I've got a night at the night owl as well. Come to that on a Friday. So we were going out Thursday and Friday um, and we're going to the night owl and just chatting to the DJ. It's Clive, obviously. Um, and it was back in the MySpace days. Yeah. And we all had we all had MySpace. And I just messaged him on a whim, just thinking, mate, I really I I, I said I really like chatting to you. Um, you're a cool guy. Um, we're similar age. Um, he's a little bit older, I think. And I was like, You you're only do you're doing like four or five hours. Do you not ever want a break? <laughs> like now knowing that I would never have a break in a four hour day. <laughs> I was like but I work at Sainsbury's and you get quarter of an hour for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's, tr 
too. <laughs> well, you did by then. You got to work six now. Um, but I was like, oh, if you ever, you know, if I would, I would love to do it. And he basically replied about an hour later, and I was like, oh, I've got a message off Jinx on MySpace, <laughs> <laughs> and he just basically said, write, write out a set list for forty-five minutes to an hour. Just write a set list. What would you play? And he went, it's, um, it's, he said, I sound, it sounds a bit s- silly me asking this because I know you like, I know you know what all the songs are anyway. But so I just wrote a set list of like bangers, like no something you wouldn't do now because you do need a few like in between tracks to kind of mix it up. But it was just like 20 stone cold dance floor mosh pit songs. Mm. And he was like, okay put all those songs onto a couple of CDs and come to the Nile. I was like, you fucking what? And he, he just said, come to the Nile. And I, and we made a bit, I don't know, I can't remember if you were there, Jamie, or not, but we made a big deal out of it. Like me and Dan and all the, all the lads were like, Damon's going to DJ at the Nile. Like, what the fuck's that about? And it just started there. And I was just, I was taught the basics, the absolute basics. Um, press play, use a slider take the CD out, put the CD in, change the track number. Basic, very basic. And then as time progressed, it was like, oh, this is cue points and faders and, you know, change the BPM. And and it, I guess it was kind of like an internship. Um, <laughs> like, okay. And then, and then about a month later, he was like, um, do you want to do the first hour at Props on Thursday? And I was like, whoa. Because props was always rammed from the doors opening. Like there was no mm. in between. There was no there was no chill out two hours at the start of the night. It was the cl- the queue for when it was opening was down the end of the road. And I remember you, these days. And I was like, the first hour at props to loads of people. And so I was like, I've got to change it a little bit. So I started I put in putting loads of different tracks. And he was like, that was good. And then he started letting me do the last hour. And I was like, all right, this is worrying. Because <laughs> if you fuck it up, then you're like, it's the last hour. It's packed. They're, everyone's drunk. They want a good time. So I changed the set list of it, put in what I wanted to play. And then, yeah, that's how it started. Um, and then eventually, uh, I don't know if I'm going too far. but No, carry on. Yeah, Clive moved on. I got my own room at Props. Um we did some festivals and the rest is history. You only had your own route. Like dude, those are the days back in propaganda times, like I lived for Thursday night. Yeah. Just lived for it every week. Just loved every second of it. It was just perfect. It um, was. Yeah. When it was downstairs, when it was downstairs and like it was you and Clive mixing up and stuff. It was just phenomenal. And then when you got you, then you did downstairs by yourself or they moved to the middle room at that point. I used to do a cup because um, yeah, Clive was, just getting more gigs elsewhere. So I'd sometimes have to cover us the whole night, which I was cool with doing. Um, and it was great fun. Um, then it was like um, our friend Jack Higgins was in charge of props. Yes. And he was like, um, so we're changing the format a little bit. And we want you to just do this bottom floor stuff on your own in the middle floor. And Clive's going to do pop, um, R&B, oh, oh, hip hop. Yes. Um, so me and Clive were spending less time together, but we were in the same club playing music and we, we were killing it along with like John, John Wilden upstairs playing indie. It was, yeah, for a, for a couple of years, it was, it was really, really successful. It was spot on. So, Can you remember oh, the first oh, set you did? Yeah, I can. I got pictures of it. And like I said, we made a bit of a, bit of a big deal of it. Um, we were pre-drinking probably at my house somewhere. Um, yeah, and then it was just like, shit, I'm going to do some DJing. This is weird. And it wasn't really DJing. It wasn't like mixing. I didn't know what I was fucking doing. Um, I was just cho- I was choosing the songs and I was getting to play them myself. I get what, I get what you're saying. It's not really DJing. But I remember I covered for you one time. And oh, in the, pigs. in the pigs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fucking nerve wracking as hell. Yeah. Because especially for the first time, because you don't know what sort of music or songs the audience is going to appreciate. And it was that that night I went, okay, this is fucking harder than it looks. Yeah. 
it's like, do you have things or actions that you sort of look out for in a crowd that you're like, this isn't working. I need to mix this up. It's not going down right tonight. Or do you just, you've got the songs you want and you fucking go for it. Um, I'm going to sound a little bit big headed here. Um, <laughs> but amongst like, amongst the DJs that I DJ with, like John Weldon and Clive, are, are two of my closest friends, they have both told me on numerous occasions that, or I'm not, I'm not the best DJ. I will, I hold my hands up to that every single time. I, I know what I'm doing and I can do it and I can pull it off. Um, I, I'm not technically gifted. I can't DJ on vinyl. Um, there are D there are millions and millions of DJs that do it better than me. Um, but they will both tell me that my biggest skill when I'm DJing is I know exactly what to play and when to play it. And I don't know why, or I mean, obviously it probably just goes for my love of all types of music. I can just find a song. If I'm stuck, I'll have a go-to song and I can, I just, I know it'll work. And then you go from there. So one or two might not work. And as a DJ, you've got to be prepared for that. You've got to be prepared to think not every single song you're going to play that night is going to go down really, really well. It's just, if something's not going down well, what is it you're going to play next? To, yeah, to bring it back because you can't exactly stop the song halfway through and go. Sorry, you folks, <laughs> you just gotta you just gotta write it, and then the next you just gotta make sure the next one works. And for for whatever reason, I that's one of my that's one of my biggest skills as you know a DJ that's played massive venues, and I've got a long longevity that's just lasted, and it's probably because of that. So I I don't. You know, like again, it's not to sound big headed, but if I can, if I play a stinker, the next one I'll follow up with will usually help me out a little bit. It's good at reading the room. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do take requests. I love talking to punters. Like if people in spoons are coming up to me, yeah, it's a bit annoying if you're trying to, if you're in the middle of like doing a mix, but I do love talking to people. And it just goes back to what we were talking about at the start. It's like, I'm quite a chatty person. And um, if some drunk 50 year old woman comes up to me in spoons, I'll chat to her and I'll play a song because I'm sometimes, you know, that's what they want. And you got, if you make everyone happy, then you'll be all right. <laughs> I just it ever fuck you off though. And people come up and they're like, so how'd you do it? And they stand the booth. Oh. And start, like, <laughs> you're like, do you mind? So I'm trying to, you it's know, like get away. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know it's a it's a bugbear for a lot of DJs and yeah for everyone it's like can I ever go can I plug my phone in will you play this song off YouTube and what no it's yeah have you got can I put my phone into your computer and you can play this off YouTube it happens like people are idiots but for every idiot you get someone that's a bit more respectful and they will ask for a genuine song and they will come and thank you for what you're doing and. You t- just take the good with the bad. You're going to be fucking an absolute hero once all this start- lockdown starts to fuck off. <laughs> Everyone is going to be loving it. Like we said earlier, everyone's going to be outside naked partying. So I'll soundtrack it. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the festivals happen then? So you're DJing clubs and stuff. Like, How did you manage to make it up to the next level? Well, again, Clive was a big, you know, big factor with that um, for the first part. Um, and then with the second part, it was a guy called Jim Lockie. Um, but to explain the first part, um, Clive was working for a headphone company um, and he just rang me one morning and was like, are you going to download? And I was like, nah, probably not. And I was like, I'm not really into like massive festivals. I, I, w- I love festivals, but it was just like, I'm a bit older. I can't really do that anymore. And he was like, do you want to DJ a download? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> he was like, oh, okay. So this is the deal. Um, I won't talk about figures and money, but he was like, this is the deal. We're going Friday morning. Um, you're going to DJ Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six hours. And yeah. And I was like, we get to see the bands in the day. Yeah. We're camping VIP. Yeah. Let's do it. I was, I was naive. I was a bit naive, 
um, as of because I'd never done festivals. But I just said, yeah, I just said, yeah, I want to do it. I, it's something you can't turn down. Um, so we did download the first year. It was amazing. It was so good. And I don't know if this is where your question is coming on to, but the sec- for the second year, Tom. Um, but yeah, so the first year was amazing. It was literally, I had the time of my life. Um, and then I got invited back the second year. And I was a bit more savvy to what was going on. Um <sighs> And probably against my better judgment, I took the piss a little bit. Um, which is quite hard to admit, but, you know, I, I messed up. And Tom knows the story. Um, oh, yes, I do. But I got away. It, it was fine. And it was, you know, war under the bridge. And uh, But, it, yeah, doing download was absolutely amazing. And I did the same slots again, three hours. Didn't get to see any headliners. Um but it was just amazing. It was just, yeah, download. It changed my opinion of a big festival. And I was, I, we used to go to Reading all the time, obviously. And you came with us, Jay. And um, we used to just do Reading as youngsters because it was the greatest festival in the world. And I could run around all day and drink all day for four days. And I could. Um, we did. I can't so much now. Um, <laughs> and I didn't think I'd be able to do it download, but it was, it worked all right. And I, I, it changed my opinion that a big festival doesn't have to be like Reading um, because download is 20 times and like better in how it's run um, the space um, and the setup. It's just phenomenal. Reading are obviously up in their game this year and, and because of COVID and they're changing the layout of the festival to have two bigger stages instead of one, but download have been doing that for years. Like download have had two massive outdoor stages um for years. They and it's it works amazing and I was so impressed. It's a shame, it's a shame that download have lost us with a download, isn't it? Next year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> fuck you, COVID, you piece of shit. COVID. Still got kiss though, it's fine. Still got kiss. Oh yeah. And death tones, <laughs> but that's cool. Yeah, and then and then um so the third year for download. I wasn't invited back, which was fine. I was like, you, I'm, I'm okay with that. I was like, I know I, I did wrong. And I was in the Frog and Fiddle and I was talking to a guy called Jim Lockie, who's uh, a fabulous singer um, and his band is amazing. And he probably won't see this, but he's such a good dude. And we were just chatting. And he was like, uh, so you're DJing Trees this year? And I was like, No. I've never DJ 2000 Trees. He was like, why? I was like, because it's 2000 Trees and it's amazing. And it's like, for me at the time, I know I'd done download, but 2000 Trees was the pinnacle. It's like my favorite festival in the world. I absolutely adore it. The people that run it are amazing. And I've met a few of them. Um, it's just the greatest festival to exist. And I'm, I know it might sound like I'm blowing smoke out their asses, but it's in fucking Cheltenham. It's 10 minutes from my house. It's, it's mind blowing that, that <laughs> fest, it blows my mind that that festival is so close. And the bands that I get to see and the friends I get to see, it's like my ultimate, you know, dream. Yeah. So they were like, you've got a DJ. And I was like, how do I go about that? And he was just like, just leave it with me. And then two days later, I got an email from, the sign disco company who which wasn't the same company as i did for download and they were like yeah do you want to come and do a set i'm like what and it was the same moment it, i was i was in exactly the same mind space as when clive said do you want to play the nile it was exactly the same like download i was like okay i would love to do it and i'll do it and i can i know i can do it 2000 trees was different i felt so different when i got asked to do trees that was like Fuck. Like a dream come true. Unbelievable. And they were like, yeah, we need you to do, um, it's, it's a, I, th- I can't even remember. How. It was a four hour, it's a four hour set. It's in the cave. And I was like, in the cave, which is, if you've not been to 2000 trees, the cave is like the second stage and it's, it's big. It's a small festival, second stage. And, but the bands that have played on that stage, like the wonder years, um, while she sleeps, 
like all those bands have played that stage that it's the heavier stage and they're like we want you to do a rock set in the in the second stage and they said we can't pay you but we'll reimburse your ticket money and i was like that's fucking perfect i was like i i would do this for free like i would do it for free and um I did it and the organizer um, came on the stage and he was like, whoa. And he couldn't believe it. It was going off. And I was DJing with John Weldon on the other channel. Um, and it was just the greatest night. It was, I kind of, I had a moment whilst I was on stage, I kind of broke down a little bit and I, I cried for about a minute um, away from the stage. So I, I pressed play on a song and I had to walk off because I was just so overwhelmed with, what was going on and i know it doesn't sound it doesn't sound much because there was probably there's probably only like a thousand people in there in that tent but it's a festival i've been going to for a long long time and it just it meant the world to me to be there and to play and also it's like at download and reading all the people there are not your friends but at trees you know that at trees you know there's a lot of people there are your mates and they're rooting for you. Like when I go and see a friend's band play trees, I'm rooting for them. And it, it just felt like at that time they were rooting for me. And it was, it was something I've never experienced before. It's incredible. It's like a proper dream come true moment. You know, but you say it's not very big, yeah. but for you, that's oh. fucking massive. And I've seen Clive DJ there before. I, I went with Clive, a few times, to- the first time I went was with Clive and he got me a VIP pass and he was DJing. And then, but I'd never really thought about it. I was like, it's not going to happen because John Wilden DJs there every year and he's, he's the Don. Um, there's other great DJs there. And yeah, to be asked to play there was amazing. And I, I did really well. And then the silent disco company were like, well, you're part of our roster now. And you've got to go to other festivals. So that's how Reading happened. That's what I was just about to ask you. Because yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a propaganda. Was that a propaganda? Um, sorry, what was that? Was Reading not with propaganda? So no, no, Reading wasn't with propaganda. Reading, yeah, I did the second year at Trees and then they said, um, would you like to do Reading? And I was like, well, Jamie knows my history with Reading and going every single year from... 2000 to 2010 I went every year yeah. it was a big fucking deal and I I said to myself in 2011 which was the first year I went to trees I was like a I'm never going to a big festival ever again because trees were so good and b I'm never fucking going to Redden again because that place is huge and it's ridiculous and I can't cope with it and then they said do you want to DJ Redden <laughs> Go back on yes. what I just said. <laughs> Fucking want to DJ Redding, and that was because they they knew that I it wasn't a, as a rock DJ. It was more of what I do on a Saturday in Spoons, which is R and B, hip hop, pop music, drum and bass, all that stuff. And they were like, "Just come and do it." So I was actually on the same channel as John Wilden. We were doing our slots on and off. Um, I we spent the whole weekend there. Um, it was unreal and we were DJing I say against it's not against they're on another channel um, and if you uh, if you've not been to a headphone disco you get a pair of headphones and you can choose which DJ you listen to and there's no loud music it's just all three headphones so all the DJs can hear is just singing and it's it is literally the greatest experience the first time I ever did it a download was it blew my mind and Reading was like, you got the propaganda, propaganda DJs on one channel and me and John Wilden on this channel. And that weekend was just ridiculous. Like we drank a lot, we piled a lot, but we absolutely smashed it every night. And the propaganda DJs were so good as well. And there were 6,000 people in that tent. Oh, it's, the, it's the biggest to the biggest amount of people I've ever played to. Um, there's an amazing video on YouTube. If you search for Propaganda Reading Festival 2018, I think it was 2018 I played. Yeah, 2018, um, Silent Disco Propaganda. And if you search for it, and Propaganda did an amazing promo video for it. And you can literally just see me and John on stage, like just going for it. And the amount of people in that tent was 
just unreal. Unreal. Can you remember walking out and seeing that many people? Yeah. I mean, we had we obviously had to set up anyway. And I was just thinking, this is big, isn't it? Um John was like, it's it's a lot bigger than trees. I mean, trees is like a thousand people in the tent. This is like five, six times bigger. We reckon there was like six thousand people in there. So that would have been nearly 20,000 people we played to over the weekend. Um, yeah, when you work it out, yeah, fuck. When you work it out. And obviously people come in and out. So it might have been more than 20,000 in total that got to go into that Sun Disco tent, which is ridiculous when you think about it. It's a lot of headphones. Over three <laughs> nights. Oh, yeah, just over three nights. And yeah, 20,000 plus probably went through that tent and heard me and John... On, on that channel. That's incredible. Are you, are you talking to people as well, like uh, doing the deal? Oh, is it literally just tunes? No, I was, I'm massive on the microphone. Um, <laughs> oh, I know you are normally. I wasn't sure if you were doing that. But the thing about the Sign Disco is because they've only got the headphones to kind of get them into a vibe. And you're kind of doing battle with the other channel, but you're not because you want to kind of like make it just a great night for everybody. There's so much hype. Like the like the microphone is like stuck in my hand. Like just get like go people on channel A, let's go, come on. And then and they're like, oh my god, it's us. And they go for it. <laughs> and they absolutely go for it. And honestly, if you if any point of any song you go, people on channel A, let me hear you scream. And then you just and you listen, and then all you get is and it's it's mad. Because, so cool. but yeah, like I, like it goes back to it before. Like a, a silent disco DJ wouldn't work if you're not a microphone person. It wouldn't. Yeah, it's not the same experience. Which is why I guess for me it, it works perfectly because I do like to have a bit of a chat. Yeah. Obviously Sometimes I'm... you know not supposed to, but yeah, there <laughs> yeah. are there there are there is a club that I play that don't really like you being on the microphone but at headphone disco you you have to have that microphone permanently in your hand sometimes you might as well just be listening to spotify <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you're not there to see a dj you're there to party with your friends but you still want some interaction yeah and so yeah headphone discos is is all about how you are with the crowd as well it's a massive massive part so when it comes to preparing a set and whatnot is it a different approach you'd take doing the festivals and you would play in a club or is it pretty much the same? It was, I think the first time I did Reading, it was going to be a different approach until I realised a lot of the stuff that I played on the Saturday in Spoons would work perfectly anyway. Um, and I thought, oh, what can we do? What can we do? And then just play Beyonce and it's fine. <laughs> And people still want to go hard to the big R&B songs, the big hip hop songs. It's exactly the same. Um, the youngsters at Reading, like it's a young crowd now. It's like it's traditionally now a, a post GCSE, post A level crowd. Um, end of, you know, you get your results and it's the end of August. It's the last party of the summer. Um, the crowd is so different now. When we used to go as um, kids paying to get in, it was a rock and metal festival. Mm. Reading was a rock festival. Slayer playing Metallica, you know, that was what it was. It was big metal bands, a pop stage, uh, sorry, not a pop stage, a pop punk stage and hardcore music, not hardcore, like happy hardcore, like hardcore punk and metal. That was all the music there. Occasionally they would book 50 Cent or the Rasmus and try and mix it up and it didn't work. But it got to the point with Reading where they just went from, we're not booking those bands anymore. We are going the total opposite end of the scale. We're going to make the festival bigger. Um, it's going to be a, a GCSE A-level thing. And it's now post Malone, you know, big indie bands are massive at Reading, um, you know, Arctic Monkeys, who I love anyway. But it's, I saw Dua Lipa at Reading on the main stage. Now, 10 years ago, that sort of ice wouldn't have been playing that festival. But now there's a lot of like artists 
in that genre um, or in that mold that are playing that festival and they are high up on the, on the stages, they're headlining. Um, yeah. And if you look at the festival, which is but this year, I mean, Queen's the Stone Age are headlining, but the other headliners and the other big bit of artists are either indie or pop. And there's there's not a lot of rock and metal about. There is UK rock, like Yumi at Six fall into the that sort of category, but there's no like like Slayer wouldn't be playing there anymore. I mean, I know they've no. stopped, but they wouldn't I mean, yeah. they wouldn't be booked for that festival anymore. They wouldn't go near it. Um, they wouldn't be booking heavy bands for the main stage like they used to. Just going back to the club scene a second, like, because obviously there's not a lot of alternative venues anymore, especially mm. with like small towns like Cheltenham, because obviously you used to have the pigs, um, you had props and you had the night owl. Now you've got the pigs and potentially the frog. But I know the frog don't really do a lot of DJ sets. So they have more like the bands. Yeah, yeah. But, so I suppose, having, again, going back to the music taste and everything, you had to sort of adapt anyway. Yeah. Because otherwise you'd have been pigeonholed to one place. And there's obviously quite a few DJs that DJ there anyway. Yeah. And um, it's funny you mentioned that because when I was in the pigs on Saturday night and I was talking to um, Charlie Glover, who's a young up and coming DJ in Cheltenham. He's been in the, in the scene for a, a couple of years. He went through exactly the same way that I went. He, you know, Clive picked him up and Clive taught him how to do it. And he's got his own nights now. And, and he said to me, like, am I missing a trick? Because you grew up on metal and punk and stuff. And now you DJ what I'm DJ in, but he's not got that string to his bow, but it's not necessarily that important anymore. Like, you are right. Like back in the day, there was alternative clubs all over the place. Yeah. Um, it might be different in other towns. Like you're in Birmingham, Jay. We, we've been to clubs in Birmingham where there's alternative music and the scene's a bit different. But in Cheltenham, yeah, it's just, I mean, even the clubs in Gloucester, like Crackers, that used to be a big rock night, they're not there anymore. So I was just happy to be DJing somewhere else that wasn't props when I got asked to do spoons and I kind of had a, a certain amount of knowledge of what to play there anyway. Cause I was, mm. I was working there on a Saturday night behind the bar. So I knew the sort of stuff that the DJ would be playing. I knew the music, it was just pulling it all together. And then once you do that and I, like I was playing same artists every week, but I was just growing an appreciation for that sort of music. And like you said, when you, you mentioned tiny temper earlier, it's like, that's a banger. Written we, stars we know it is. Yeah, it's we know it's a banger. We know Sia songs are huge and people sing along to it. And it's for me, yeah, it was just about trying to op open my horizon of what was out there. And, and it did that and it worked an absolute treat because if I wasn't doing Weatherspoons um, on a Saturday night, I, I would definitely not have been able to get away with doing Reading. I'd have been like a duck in headlights i'd have been yeah. i've had no chance duck in headlights alive. i'd have just been like no not for me because i don't know any of the music it took me a few years to you know get not so much a reputation but just to feel comfortable playing music that i wouldn't normally necessarily listen to at home nice oh. i meant to ask earlier i just realized you were saying like you grew up playing your dad playing guitar and you singing along yeah. and whatnot did you never want to learn to play an instrument? I just couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> get around it. I My dad really tried. Um, still sick of rock, bad mind. Um, I say, I've heard yeah. you blast out some Devil Driver vocals. I, can, I know they're I can, there. I can press that blue and red button like no one else. But <laughs> when, it comes to, when it comes to musical <laughs> instrument, I guess I, I just never got a grip to it. I just, I just couldn't do it. I don't know why. I I still think I'd like to learn maybe bass or something. Um, but I just I don't know. Time time consuming. Maybe my fingers aren't right. I don't know. I just I would have loved to. I would love to be able to play guitar. But I again, I think it comes back to like when I mentioned about like doing DJ in set, do DJ in sets online. You want to do it right, and you want to. You don't want to put out a shit product, and I think with guitar and I, I just give up pretty quickly because I just could not do it. And I, I'm like, if anyone ever tries to hear me play this, then like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
So I said in the intro, uh, you're somewhat of an advocate for the local music scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, uh, to my knowledge, at least two local bands that you've got tattoos of. That shows how much you love that shit. Yeah. As, how did you first like discover how much local talent there was? Because like the amount of bands I've seen you list off in the local scene is yeah. ridiculous. Well, we were always going to spend shows and four foot finger shows in Cheltenham. Like they like I, I spoke about it with one of the lads on the podcast that I do. Like he was going to like four foot finger shows when he was like and like 16, it was like 15 or 14 or overs it um Branson's or other places like that. And yeah, I just loved going to local shows because I've always gone to gigs. I've always I used to travel with my met my mates from school. We would go to Cardiff every other weekend to see, you know, Ash or Reef or you know in in the late 90s early 2000s whatever bands were about and we got into the Welsh scene a, a lot more because we were there a lot and we saw we saw all the bands there. Um, you know, Funeral for a Friend a bit later on. Um, the band we won't mention were yeah. I used to love going to see them. Um, we saw them like 30 to 50 times, like in little venues in Cardiff. Um all those bands, we 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 just went to Cardiff most weekends to see to see bands playing in Barfly or Club I Fall Back or the uni. Um and then yeah, I guess it wasn't a bit it wasn't until like later on that I started just going to out in Cheltenham a bit more and going to the gigs in Cheltenham. And and I was DJing a little bit as well. I think it was more, it was around then. And some of the guys in the bands I'd met whilst I was at Propaganda. So it was kind of an easy transition to be like, do you, are you come see our band? And and it was like, yeah, I'll come see your band. Are you coming out Thursday to see me play? And it was kind of like that. And also one of the girls I worked with in uh, the bank house, um, Liv, she was in a band as well. So I would go out and see her band, see support bands, and then you just meet friends. You know, you just become friends with these guys because you're there a lot. And friends with like Ollie Roylance, um, who was, you know, obviously his job stopped at lockdown, but he was putting on, he's put on bands every fucking day. Um, there was always something to go and see at the frog. There was before that, there was always something to go and see at the pigs. Um, Tom's band played at the pigs in like the height of when bands were playing there every fucking day. Um, the, the posters were like massive. Um, so I just loved going to shows. Um, yeah. And became really, really good friends with a lot of the people in those bands. Are you looking forward to them coming back? Obviously I am. Yeah. I mean, I've missed local shows. I've, I'm, I, I'm a massive, massive fan of a band called Holding Absence. Um, and Ollie put them on before their debut come out and they just blown up. And there, there was like 30 people in the frog watching Holding Absence. And now if they play anywhere, it sells out. Um, I listened to their new album today, mate. I know absolute masterpiece it's yeah. unbelievable every song is so catchy from start to finish and I love they're it. just so good and when they played the frog they didn't have anything out i just went because i was like i'd heard of them and i knew this the singer has got an and like he's got a joe green voice um <laughs> yeah, he does. And honestly i i said to joe the other day i was like you're you're now not the guy <laughs> obviously he is he is the guy like, we know he's the guy um but this guy from holding absence has got a fucking pair of lungs man and i went to see him on the back of the reputation that he had as a live singer and there was yeah i don't i don't remember it being busy i just remember it being an amazing like half an hour set that they played and then anything they released i just wanted um, but that's like that's a band that from Wales that have just managed to catch a bit of success, which is amazing for them. But there are other bands in in Cheltenham that are talented and so good. I mean, I said Jim Lockie, if you Jim Lockie and the Solemn Sun, amazingly talented band. I just can't speak highly enough of them. Um, and we all know how I feel about Empire and about Joe Green. Um, five guys who like three of the guys in that band 
uh, are still really good friends of mine and um yeah joe and me obviously joe obviously does the podcast with me i wouldn't have wanted anybody else to do it with me um because he's just he's the fucking greatest <laughs> He is a wonderful human being. Obviously, he's and, been on the show before. So, and he's just yeah. Like I used to go and see his and Ben's band, The Divine Secret, when they were playing and touring, um, in Cheltenham and playing all the venues. Then Joe got me onto his new band, The Mimi Me's, and I took my dad to see him at the St Paul's Tavern. I took my dad to see Empire at the Pigs. Like, it's just. Yeah, he, whatever he touches is is amazing. It's just, I, it's a shame that they've not ever really. He's not stellar because I thought with Empire he was going to go big, and it so, kind of, yeah. yeah. But still, an amazing band. I still love listening to that record. Amazing. Jamie, you need, to, you need to listen to Hold an Absence, Jamie. Listen to that new yeah, album. I'll, I'll check them out. After it's this. unbelievable. To fair, I keep doing this. You keep telling me to listen to someone. Then about six months later, I'll remember. And I'll be like, <laughs> I really should have listened to that sooner. That was really good. He did. Uh, Day. Where he only sent us to Bury Tomorrow about a month ago. Now absolutely loves them. So six you'll come you'll, you'll come into that show on my birthday then? Yeah. Um, when are Bury, Bury Tomorrow in Bristol? Yeah. Is it Bristol? No, November 21st. You're in. I might try and go to that. I can't wait. So as we talk talking about local bands and whatnot, you've got ears on, ears from all around the world listening. Is there, is, is there like three or four bands that you think people should definitely go and fucking check out from the local scene? Well, I would really love, I mean, obviously Empire would, were a favourite of mine just because they were really good friends. And I saw, I got to see them the same year, the year I DJed at Download, they played Download. Um, so I think it's fair to say they were quite a big band anyway. Um but they're obviously not active, but I'd still suggest that people go and check out Deaf as a Girl. Um, they're on Spotify. They've got an EP. They're, I went to a fir- the first couple of shows they did. I went up to Birmingham. Um, I, the Lion, are another three, three lads, really, really good friends of mine. I love them all to pieces. Um, Biffy Clyro kind of vibe. Um super talented again will they ever get massive it's it's doubtful but i still think they deserve people's time i still think people should be able to go well i've listened to them and i can give you an opinion i think they're brilliant um and the other band i i'm not sure if i mentioned them earlier no i mentioned it on the podcast earlier so yeah i've not mentioned them on this one um is a band from swindon called all is a vow um and they're just ridiculously good. They're super, super talented. They are amazing at the whole social media side. Um, they just started a TikTok account for fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> and but they're they're on the ball with everything they're doing. Um, and I just think they're great. They've got they're a pop punk, you know, band with synths and pianos, and they just sound fucking amazing. And they make me so happy when I watch them live. And they are four genuinely genuinely wonderful people um Amazing. yeah similar vein to kind of paramore because claire's the the front woman of the band um she's just got a fucking great voice um so yeah those bands definitely but um i really i'd also like to promote a band called down not out um they're a local band i didn't really know much about them and then we interviewed joe the singer for our podcast and i played one of their songs at the two pigs over the weekend and it just went down really really well and i loved it and i loved their ep and their album um so they're another band to check out as well that's a point has anyone has like members of the band been in the room when you've played their songs because I, I know you've played local bands when you're playing the song. Yeah, so one sense. of the one of the other girls from the band um, Down and Out was actually in the Pigs on Saturday Night, and me and Sam, the other DJ, spotted her, and I was like, I interviewed the singer the other day, so I text the singer and I was like, I'm gonna, um, I'm playing your song, and she was like, Yeah, I know. My bandmates just sent me a video of her dancing around to it. Um, <laughs> so it's, I I love playing local bands like it. It goes back to that whole, like, I, I love going to see their bands. I'll play them. And that's why I get on well with people because I I can't do it. I can't play a guitar. I can't do what they're doing. I can, I can stand there for six hours and play other people's music, but I can't stand there for 40 minutes and play my own. 
Um, and I, yeah, at trees, at trees, especially like there's a band called bar fight who I've like, they're like a hardcore band. Then the music is like, not a lot of bands like that play at trees, but I still fucking throw down their song. It's like a two minute, like heavy, quick banger. And they're just like, you played our song again. This is ridiculous. And I play all is about, I've played empire at trees. I played the me, me, me's at download just because I could. And that's why you're an ambassador for local music. Because... I knew Joe. I knew Joe was there, and I was like, "I'm going to play the Mimi Me's." And I know people. <laughs> are, I know people aren't going to dance to it, and I know they don't know it. But at least they'll have heard it. And you're in charge. Who gives a shit? So yeah, <laughs> my rules. <laughs> so you've mentioned it quite a fair bit. I think it's only fair that we get to it. Your podcast, the Gatefold Gateway. How is that what it's called, Jamie? Yeah. Did I say it wrong? Apparently you have on occasion before. The yeah, I get, yeah. get it mixed up all the fucking time. I thought I got it right this time. I even double checked no, it. Did, I wrote my notes. You did. I was just sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Is but I was writing my notes earlier. I was like, I have got it right around this time, haven't I? Cool. Yes. Gatefold Gateway. How yeah. did that become? How did it, How was it born? So, yeah, like October last year, um, I was like, well, for the last two years, I guess. Um, I've been listening to a podcast every single week called Sapnin. Um, and it's the singer from the Blackout who were a big Welsh um, band in that scene, a um, guy called Sean Smith. Um, and he does a podcast called Sapnin with another guy called Morgan, who's a music journalist from South Wales. Um, and they interview musicians and they interview like top dog, top dog musicians. And I'm like, not like, Dave Grohl, but Charlie Simpson, um, uh, Winston from Parkway Drive. Um, they've had Newfound Glory on there. They, John Feldman. John Feldman from Goldfinger. Um, they get great people on their podcast and people that I want to listen to. Like the guy from um, Parkway Drive, I was like, I want to listen to what he's saying because I fucking love Parkway Drive. Um, I know that we can't necessarily do that. But I was like, I really want to chat to musicians, but I don't want to steal their idea and talk about them. Like, this is what you guys do. You, you're talking about your guest. I was right. like, I just want to talk about music. I just want to talk about records because I fucking love records. I'm a huge vinyl collector. I, I don't listen to singles. I want the whole work. And so I was like, I really want to do something because I'm going to be bored during lockdown. And I know it's coming. Um so I thought a podcast would be a way of doing it. So I got in touch with Joe and we chatted about it. And I said, look, I think we could do it. And Joe knows a lot of people. Like I say, I know a few. Joe knows everyone. Like um, he knows people. And I was like, if we do it together, you could get some cool people. Um, I can get a few cool people. Um, and maybe we could just do like a, a desert island desert island discs sort of thing where you just not your top five albums but we'll come up with some questions and we'll just chat about bands and he was like he was super keen from the start um i had the name in my head because obviously being a vinyl collector i've got gatefold vinyls and i was like hmm, gateway where where do you where did you start your musical career like what was the first record you bought and so it's like a gatefold gateway into people's like musical history through albums that they love it's a very clever name it's a great yeah. name and I come up with it and I was so <laughs> no you I was like that's, that's pretty good um, and I yeah like I said it's I had to learn I had to do it I reached out to you guys because um, you were doing yours and I was like okay you probably know some stuff like I mean it's it's basic what I do you're doing it exactly the same way as I do it on a Zoom call yeah. Um there's not really many other ways you can go about it. Um, at the moment, anyway. At the moment. Um, and I was just said to Joe, I was like, let's start booking. And we did like 10 interviews. And then I had to learn. I I, I, would, I spoke to Jamie about like, how do you put it out there? Um, so yeah, I was just like learning more software, more programs. And it was all right. I enjoyed it and learned how to do like, editing not massive amounts but enough 
to make an episode. Mm. And then, yeah, we just recorded with um, James, who was in Empire. We did two recordings of that episode. Um, we did like, we sat down and had a few beers and we just did a, like a mock one of how it would go. And then two days later, we were back on a Zoom call. We recorded it. Um, I didn't even know Zoom could record. <laughs> Zoom came. Zoom came, became popular when lockdown happened, didn't it? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Com- yeah. Companies were like, "We need that." And Zoom now is like, must be worth the same as Spotify. Um, <laughs> but they they found a niche in the market that every single company needs because you can't go to work. But I, so I didn't realize you could record. Um, I was like, so I said to Jamie, I was like, and all all the sound comes through, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's fine." And I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> and so we did it. And I was like, well, how do you like, edit bits? Like if someone says inappropriate things. Um, I was like, oh, well, I use this software. It's free. And I downloaded that software. And I've taught myself how to do the very basics. Amazing. That's all I know um, how to do on there. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I don't care about like the fade in and fade out and all that jazz. I've just, you know, I, I've done a podcast with Joe with, somebody and we had to cut 20 minutes out because it was inappropriate but we had a laugh about it and no one will ever hear it (laughs) i deleted it but it was just it was amazing i was like we've just put an episode i've got an episode on spotify i can go on spotify and my podcast is there it's It's so weird it's so weird and i was like i i still can't fathom it and i was like it's on apple Podcasts as well yeah, we've not got around to the whole YouTube thing and Joe's not very uh, keen for that and we've, we're have we not really going to go that way. I know you guys do. And it's it's amazing. It's what works for you. Um, you guys got like lots of graphics, very visual. We're not, I, I'm i not a very graphic kind of person. I can't do design. I can't draw. Um, if you ask me to draw a man, it'll be a stick man. Um, <laughs> I, li- I, I have no graphic you know, skill whatsoever. Um, Somebody in the house with the tree in the, yeah. in the corner. <laughs> and I, can, I can draw a bit of a path. <laughs> and, a window. and I might draw a cross in the window to show... Oh, panes of glass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was making progress when I went from the, the triangle roof and, and up until the, the flat one with the edges. I was like, well, that was cool. Like the rhombus, sometimes yeah. That, yeah, it goes um, that way. I thought that was time. progress, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently people can draw very well, and I'm not that person. And I, and one of my friends, I just put on Twitter, I was like, "Can anyone do me a logo?" And people want so much money for that stuff. Like, Fucking yeah, I was like, somebody, somebody tweet like they just go. They there's literally people in companies aren't there that are on Twitter and they just type graphic every twenty minutes. Yeah. And if they see someone's tweeted about, do you want a graphic? They instantly DM you. And they wanted like 300 quid for a logo. Yeah. And I was like, don't worry, mate. I was like, don't worry. And then a friend from Gloucester, Oni, he messaged me. He was like, what do you want? I was like, I've got this idea in my head and I just, I want it like this. And I, I kind of know what I want, but I don't know how to do it. And he was like, leave it at me. He charged me 20 quid. Legend. Well, That's enough. amazing. For for three logos, like the two in the circle and the and the big one, and I was like, "It's it's not what you know is who you know." What an absolute hero! Have you ever had uh, guests? I mean, I mean, I know yours is very local at the moment. Yes. But have you ever reached out to anybody and like for an interview, and they've gone, "Yeah, if you pay me so much." Um, we've not had anybody try and charge us, which is good. Um, and we are. I said we didn't want to copy what the Sapman podcast was doing, but we kind of want to do a little bit more where we talk to them about what they're doing. Cause I kind of like to promote them a bit more, especially if they're in a local band. Um, so we've condensed the chat about bands and albums and we've kind of opened up a maybe 20% to, for what they're doing and who they are and what they're about. Amazing. Um, just because I think there are like local bands are interesting. Like every scene's different in every part of the country. Like Jamie grew up in Birmingham. Like he probably went to see 
one or two local bands. I was going to Cardiff. There were local bands in Cardiff. Like that became huge because it was a big scene. Birmingham was a big scene. Um, you know, there are good bands out there, but we have gotten, we are in the process of talking to one or two people in, in much bigger bands. Which, I look forward to seeing yeah. that. Um, the Devil Wears Prada, I'm just saying. Um, Very nice. But, you know, we're, we're all right doing, I like chatting to mates and I like chatting, like finding out things I didn't know about friends and what records I listen to. And, and like you said, like the funny ones are, are the ones where it's your really close mate and you can just yeah. chat like you normally would in the pub yeah. over a pint. That's fucking brilliant. And I'm like... They are funny episodes. Like the one with Chris from I, the lion is still, it was only episode, episode three. And we still didn't really know what we were doing. It, I, I still think that's fucking comedy gold. It is hilarious. That was a really good episode. As well. I did, yeah. I enjoyed the world episode earlier. I really um, yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. That was amazing. It's, it's funny, but it's, it's still talking about music. It's still relevant. Exactly. And again, there goes that ambassador for the local scene because you're getting local bands on again. People that run venues, people that work at festivals, you know, um, producers, you get local, actual local artists as well. It's absolutely, I think it's a great idea. I think it's, a, I, I think it's going from strength to strength. I'm really enjoying Thank it. Thank you very much. It. No worries. Appreciate it. Beautiful. Tom, have you got any more questions before we start wrapping up? Is there anybody you would really love to have on the show? Is there, is there, have you got like a bucket list of like it's almost like you know you'll never get them but you'd love if you did like who would it be i mean i can only sort of say people that i've i find interesting or funny um charlie simpson from busted um i know from listening to his interviews i've met him he signed one of he signed um one of my busted vinyls um I know he's super interesting. He's funny. He loves a drink. And we only met once for like 20 minutes, but he was really interested to know about me. And he was such a nice guy. Like I would love to have a proper conversation with him about music because his favorite band is my favorite band, which is Deftones. Um, so that would be sick. I would love him on if he's listening. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's a Chronicles follower. Um, <laughs> he is. Let us know. Yeah. If you, if you are Charlie, um, we want you. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I know I've mentioned her name a few times, but I, yeah, Dua Lipa's queen, isn't she? Um, never going to happen. Like that's out of the question. Um, but there are like through DJ and there are, you know, celebrities that I've met that like, who I just think would be super interesting. Like um, Miss Dynamite, um, she was literally. Name I haven't the, heard in a long time. He was one of the nicest people I've ever met, and she's just amazing. Like, I did not expect what I got from her, and for, just a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, we that this was at a festival, and um, there was a uni ball in Aberystwyth, um, which me and Clive went to, and we had dinner with Top Loader. And they were amazing. They were chatting to us like we were their best mates. And we had pints over lunch in a pub. Incredible. Um, That's awesome. And then because the promoters of the festival, that well, sorry, it's not a festival, the uni ball, they were like, oh, you're artists. We've got no catering, but we've paid for your lunch in this pub. And we just happened to walk in at the same time Top Loader did. And they put us on the same table. Amazing. <laughs> so That's we were awesome. just drinking lager and they were like this is the menu and we had pies or burgers and really nice pub food like really nice pub food like spot on um <laughs> Aberystwyth's with some mile like bare miles to get to um but it was a wonderful uni um and yeah we met top loader and miss dynamite that was amazing um also i think um the other guy would be jesse from the eagles of death metal um just because I know he's a nice guy. Um, we met him at Download. Um, Joe Green played there with Empire, and we managed Joe. We just managed to blag ourselves backstage, um, and we were wandering around. And we met um, one of the fr- girls that we know that does photography um, for some of the bands. And 
then uh, Jesse from Eagles Death Metal walked past and Joe was like, hi, dude. And he was like, you're right, guys. And um, for some reason, neither of us had our phones on us. What? How yeah. typical. So we had to, Jesse grabbed us both. Um, I think he gave us drinks. And we're like, he finished doing media. His manager was like, what are you doing now? And he was like, I'm going with these guys. And he was like, we've got to get a picture. We've got to get a picture. And we ran around for like five, 10 minutes trying to find someone with a, with a phone or something. And we had our picture taken and he was just so happy to like, just chat about absolutely fucking nothing to, but to not be in that whole, like your band's on in two hours, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. He was like, I, I just want to do human things and not be told what to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was lovely. He was really nice. So I guess the people that I would love to have on are the people I know would be a really interesting conversation. And he'd be he'd be up there. And Eagles of Death Metal are amazing anyway. Awesome. awesome. Right, before we get out of here, we like to play a little game. It's called the Quick Fire Round. We launch five questions at you. You okay. answer them as quick as possible. It is as simple as that. Are you Come on. Ready. <laughs> Favorite pizza topping? Pineapple. With cheese or without? Without cheese. I don't need cheese. Yeah, fuck it. cheese. All the all the meat, all the meat and, and a bit of pineapple. I was hoping this had changed from over the years. No. Your first celebrity crush. Uh baby spice. How do you take your tea or coffee? I have coffee, a little bit of milk, too sugar. Who would play you in the movie of your life? Tom Cruise, because he's pretty short as well. <laughs> but Just, you know, to doing all those stunts. Even that old David Draymond, because he's got no hair like I have. So. Works. <laughs> and the last one, piece of advice that you could give to young Damien and Batcher many, many years ago. Start listening to pop music sooner. Great. It might, it might be shit, but just get into it because it's good. <laughs> just tolerate it or help just you like tolerate it. it. <laughs> Listen to more than just Linkin Park. Like, get into every type of music. Because other, you know, otherwise you will eventually. Or I guess my other my other answer, if I could change it, it would just be like grow some balls and try and get into music a bit at a younger age. Because I think uh, if I was DJing at 18, 19, I don't know where I'd be now. Nice. nice. Wonderful. Right, before we get out of here, any plugs, social medias, websites, whatever you want people to check out? I don't really plug myself on social media as a as a DJ. I'm obviously, I've got a residency, which I can't wait to get back to. Um, just go and follow some local bands I've mentioned. Um and if you're interested to listen to me talk about music with other people, then you can go on to Instagram, search for the Gateful Gateway. And also, which I think is better, is if you go on to Spotify and search for the Gateful Gateway songs, every single band and artist and track we talk about gets chucked into a playlist. Um, and it's it's becoming like the most eclectic playlist I've ever created. Um, there is everything on there. Um, and it's amazing. It's like 140 tracks at the moment. Um, just press shuffle. So Spotify, Gateful, Gateway, the songs. Um, and yeah, the podcast is available everywhere on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, other places. I don't think anyone else uses other places to listen to podcasts, but um, yeah, the Gateful Gateway, we've got 17 episodes out. Um, they are mostly local um, people, which I, which we've talked about, but if you like music and you want to listen to people talk about music, kind of good stories. Exactly. And it's it's fun. Fun stories. Yeah. Fun exactly. chat. And where can people find you on Twitch? Your DJ so DJ? my Twitch is DJ Damo 666, I think. Um, yeah. The, unfortunately, because I'm now outside at the two pigs doing a little bit of DJing every weekend, the Twitch has kind of slowed right down and I've not done it for a few weeks, but who knows? I might play some football manager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. I've done it. 
once, honestly, I've done it. I'll play football manager and talking to a microphone about Paul Pogba. I don't care. <laughs> phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. If, if that's what people want, like there are people that play football manager on Twitch. I've just never understood people watching honestly, their games. I love watching uh, my friend play Grand Theft Auto, though. So okay. th- there are some good Twitches out there. Fair nice. enough. Damo, this has been amazing, mate. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. It was great fun. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. You so are much. very welcome. I really hope that, um, yeah, I, I guess I can sort of talk, mention it to other people who are listening. Like, we've got some plans for you to, guys to come onto our podcast um, in the future, and but I really want to do it live. I, we've done we've done one live recording a couple of weeks ago, which was weird because we were allowed in the uh, we were allowed in gardens, and um, we went to someone's house and sat in their garden. And we recorded wow. it, which was weird. I like I wasn't sure how I felt about it, but um, it was nice. It was really nice. Um, and I really want that to become the norm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd love to do it live with you. So hopefully we can make that happen. Yeah. Maybe we'll put it on Twitch. <laughs> Let's do it. Fuck Why not? It. Yeah. Wonderful. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, my friend. No problem. Cheers, guys. Take, Take care. care. Of Bye. 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 Hi, I'm Frank Guglielmelli. And I'm the narrator for some wonderful audio dramas from Syscast, like Marty and Mars, Bounty Hunters, and a great part in Val Toby, with much more to come. You can find these programs on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Or head over to our website, www.syscast.com. We are excited to announce that we are now affiliated with the Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie. 